Okay, so let's look at this. Uh, continue our airway. First thing we'll do is open the airway. There's only two ways to open the airway. A jaw thrust for spinal patients and a head tilt chin ring for HMS patients or menstrual patients, right? So we open the airway by doing a head tilt chin lift. We grab the, the chin and tilt it back and the, mechanically move the tongue off the upper body. Right? So you really do this in a Unconscious patient, a conscious patient, how do we check to make sure the airway's open? Uh, right, you have an air, open airway because you can speak. So, an unconscious patient, we will use CD, circulation, airway, breathing, a conscious patient, ABCs, okay? Uh, we check a pulse here first and then open the airway. Because if they don't have a pulse, we, we have to go and use, we have to start CPR, right? Here, ABC. So I come up to the patient. How are you doing? Good. Good. Boom. Good. ABCs are done. I reach down, I grab the radial pulse, okay? So you're sort of doing it all at once. The patient speaks to you so they have an open airway. Unconscious patient, I have to go up, check the pulse. They have a pulse, atraumatic patient, head tilt, chin lift, right? And then uh, make sure to see if they're breathing. If they're not breathing, I'm going to breathe for them. So we have, this is an important word here because you'll see that in the test a lot, inadequate and adequate, okay? So the patient has inadequate respirations for some reason, okay? So they have a different sound. We'll get into all these different airway sounds again later, okay? But they have stride or that sort of harsh upper airway sound, the sound of a partially obstructed uh, upper airway gurgling, so they have fluid, right? Have some sort of fluid in there. They're not able to speak, so they might have a full body airway obstruction. You remember that from CPR, right? So they might have a full body airway obstruction, and, or they might need suctioning. They, uh, they might have vomitus or blood or something in their mouth. They might have swelling. So the, there's something in there that's blocking the airway, the upper airway. And that would be the inadequate part. Inadequate because it creates that DT mismatch, right? Remember that from the other day? The ventilation, bringing the air back in, the cue, the perfusion part, where the, the gas exchange takes place. So something that's in, even the tongue, would create a mismatch because it's not allowing air in. Uh, vomitus or blood would do the same thing. It's not allowing air in, or it's blocking, partially blocking the air in, so it's creating a mismatch. And what you get from coming in is the one diffusing. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? All right, so uh, other snoring respirations, gurgling, strider, we'll, we'll cover all these in the respiratory emergency chapter. But these are different airway sounds that uh, are causing some sort of obstruction. So we do it by using the head tilt chin lift. We just uh, went over that. I don't know if I would just cross finger technique by opening the jaw. I don't like putting my fingers close to people's mouth. So really you just sort of lift up and then uh, pull back on the head and the tongue will come off of the epiglottis if it's back there. Otherwise, you you have to, when you pull down on the jaw, it will open the mouth enough to get like a suction catheter in there, right? That's probably what you're trying to do in a, or an OPA. Just avoid putting these in here, right? Uh, you, you come up like this. And the patient wakes up, bounce your finger off. So, any questions on the head tilt chin lift? Everybody's really familiar with that. We'll, we'll practice it a couple times. Shouldn't be much. And then uh, on the atraumatic patient, and sort of you have a picture there which shows you just sort of putting a hand on the back of the head and lifting up the chin and how uh, it removed the, the tongue off the epiglottis. You have to, even an adult, you have to make sure that you don't overextend the neck, hyper, what's that, yeah, hyperextend the neck too much, 
tissue risk closing the airway off. With pediatric patients, you really risk closing the airway off. Uh, and either a, a small adult or a child, or might, they may have to have uh, padding underneath their shoulders, okay, to, to correct the, into the gap up there, especially in pediatrics. I think there's a picture coming up. Same way with the with the infant, in a, on a child or infant up to the age 10, and then they're in a neutral position. We talked about the, the straw, the water burger straw, uh, the white one. You don't want to kink it too much or you kink their airway off. So up to about age 10, uh, neutral position. You wouldn't really use this on a child. They would stay in a neutral position. And that's what we're talking about, padding. Because children's heads are so big, it creates this sort of uneven. It's like a, a, a football player with a helmet on. It, it creates a, a big head, so it creates a gap there. Where you, you can even have an adult with a big head, and uh, you might need to put some padding there in, in the same way. Jaw thrust for trauma patients. I've actually never done this because as a paramedic, I can do other airway things to open people's airways where I don't have to do it. Uh, uh, so I can't really tell you if it works. It must work because people teach it and they do it, but I don't know. I've never actually done it in 20 plus years. But uh, I would just put an endotracheal tube in there. If, you know, if I needed to, a, a trauma patient, I would, if they're to that point where I'm inserting an OPA, then I would just put an endotracheal tube in there instead of an OPA. So, but do keep the keep it in a neutral alignment. This is sort of shows you get your fingertips back in here and you push forward with the jaw. Uh, one day I'll have to try it just to try it and see how it feels. But I haven't got that board yet. So, so the jaw thrust for, for trauma patients and and children as well, because you can't get a child in the head cut chin rest, right? So you might want to do a jaw thrust, okay, to open the airway. So we're going to hear real quickly about different adjuncts to use in there, okay. If, if they're unconscious, but they're breathing, they have a pulse, you might put them in the recovery position. So you'd roll them on the, their side in an... Uh, in EMS, it's a left lateral recumbent position because if you roll them to the right, then they'd be facing the wall most of the time. So you want them to the left so they're facing you. You don't want to be necessarily right in front of them, you know, in case they vomit, but you roll them to the left. So get a left lateral recumbent position. And of course, it's contraindicated if there's trauma, right? On a backboard, if there's trauma, and you need to still put the patient on their side. Let's say they're on a backboard and they're vomiting and you need to get them up on their side. You log roll them on the board over to their side. That's why it's really important when we get to spinal mobilization that you tie, they're tied down quite tight. So if you have to log roll them up, they don't slide and manipulate their spine. We'll look at that when we look at trauma and backboarding, okay? But this is the... Re a recovery position that way if this person does vomit it's it comes out I mean you're you'll be there to suction but if they do they're not flat on their back and they have less chance of aspiration uh, with them being on their side okay so suctioning anytime there's uh, fluid in the airway anytime that uh, it could be a bunch of mucus, it could be vomit, it could be blood, anything that's in the airway, we need to suction that out. Uh, we went through suctioning last time, but the, the PPE for suctioning is, you know, you probably want a mask and a, and a face shield and definitely gloves, right? So if they suspected of having some sort of, like TB, the N95 or the HEPA mask, that's the one that's fitted to you. It's, it's different than a surgical mask because it's fitted to you. And uh, you carry that on the ambulance with you. You have the different suction equipment, which uh, 
Suction Goldie yesterday, so this is some Goldie juice. So let's look at the different types of suction equipment. You have, like this one is an electric suction, but what you will have in the ambulance is one that you will have this, and this will be plugged into the wall. You won't actually see this. You'll see the meter, and, the, uh, and then the, the suction unit is actually behind the wall. So you won't, you won't necessarily see that. So what we look at is just the equipment that's on the outside. You have the suction container. Now you're aware that if, if you have a, a suction requires a vacuum, correct? So all the holes and everything, so if this is off, if you're troubleshooting, if this cap is off and there's nothing attached there, then that has to be covered. It has to create a vacuum. Would this come out? <laughs> Goldie has floaties. There's floaties in there. But anyhow, we have a suction container. These are disposable, so once they fill up, you put them in the red bag and dispose of them. If the, but you keep it long enough to show the contents to the hospital if you have to suction uh, the patient out. The suction tubing. Right? That's pretty common sense, right? And then one thing that you can do with the suction tubing is the fact that you can suction with it. So if, the, if you have some really thick mucus that the suction tips are being clogged up on, you can actually suction with this part. It's not a sterile procedure. You're sort of sticking in there like the dentist does, right? And then it gives you a little bit extra uh, diameter on the suction tip because the first suction tip we'll look at is the Y'all remember what this is called? Well, it, no, no, it doesn't have a hole. But it's the same name. The Yonkers tip, weird name, or the hard tip suction. One of the, the biggest drawbacks of the hard tip suction device is the small bore, the small diameter. I've suctioned heavy spit before, and it gets clogged up in here. Real thick mucus, and it gets clogged up. So the diameter is not very big on the, the Yonkers tip or the hard tip. It's the hard tip, right? Suction. Uh, there's two different types, like you mentioned. There's a type with a hole in it, and this one without the hole. So this one without the hole provides continuous suction. What would you have to do with the one with the hole? Like a hole. So you, with your gloved hand, you'd have to cover up the hole to create the vacuum. So if you had it attached to the suction tubing here, then you'd have to cover the hole up and then and then suction. Okay. Steve cough. Okay. What what is this one? What was this one called? Soft tip, tip tonsil tip, soft suction. Okay. Uh, it has a lot of uh, sort of drawbacks to it, even a smaller diameter, right? All of these do have the hole in it, so you, you would have to cover that with your gloved hand. These are good for like if the patient is seizing and you want to try to get between their teeth and they just have a lot of mucus there and you want to try to suction that, or if you want to go down the nose. It, it can go down the nose as well. Some of the OPAs have holes in them where you can drop this down through the OPA and suction. Hmm? Yeah, you can, you can suction, like, the, you can get the side of their nose. I mean, or you can suction the nose, that, that's fine. So the soft tip, tonsil tip, Yonkers tip, these are just adjuncts to help you uh, with, with the suctioning. Now, let's say it's time to suction. 
So you turn it on, make sure that you have power to it, that you have suction, right? You come over to the patient, you open the airway. Now this has continuous suction, so, but if it didn't have continuous suction, then you would suction on the way out. So you take this, you look at what you're suctioning, okay? You go down, you suction back and forth. Anybody remember for how long? Did we go with 10 last year? Okay, let's go with 15 this year. 10 to 15 seconds, okay? Most of the tests are going to say 10. It depends on what book, you, book you're reading, 10 to 15, okay? But you, you go in, you see the whatever you want to suction, you go back and forth for 15 seconds, all right? And then stop suctioning. If you're ventilating the patient with the back valve mask, start ventilating the patient again, okay? Once you clear the airway obstruction, why the 15 seconds? Because uh, around that time, you can get the vagal nerve to decrease the heart rate. Right. We, suctioning can cause a vagal response. Okay. That's right. And it causes a decrease in heart rate. You definitely don't want that in a pediatric patient, or you don't really want it in an adult. So if you do create a vagal response, you drop the patient's heart rate, you would stop suctioning, okay? Once you stop suctioning, it stops the stimulus from taking place, and the heart rate will come back up, okay? As long as you continue to suction, and if you create a vagal stimulus, the heart rate's going to continue to drop. So if you notice the heart rate dropping, you want to stop suctioning. If you're monitoring the heart rate with a monitor or pulse ox or whatever, and the heart rate is not dropping, you can con continue to suction. You just have to monitor the heart rate to make sure that you don't create a vagal response. Everybody good with that? It's, it's like a cat, right? You pet a cat, and what does the cat do? Oh, no. They purr. No, kitty will cat. purr. So we have a nice kitty. So you pet the cat, and the cat goes, rrr, 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 right? You pet the cat more, rrr, 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 rrr. continues to purr, right? That doesn't you, really sound like a purr, really, but. No, will you purr? <laughs> no. Okay. So you continue to pet, purr, purr, kitty, right? You stop petting the cat, they purr. stop purring. Same way. Suction. Create a vagal response, stop suctioning, stop the vagal response. So we'll, we'll suction Goldie uh, here after a bit, but that's, it's, it's a pretty easy procedure, but it's an airway procedure. So when we, when we talk about suctioning, we're talking about airway, okay? And, and vomitus or blood or something in the airway is a priority, it's a concern. So we want to make sure that uh, we're ready to suction. And you'll need uh, like some water to clear it out. Like if you get a big old loogie in here, some nice little lung butter, you're suction, suctioning that, get, that gets clogged up. You might have to get water and sort of clear that out. So you want to get some sterile water because that's all you carry and, and suction that out, try to clear that out. I've had to throw these away before because That's the loogie got caught up in there. It was like an egg or something. It was so thick. So you just toss this away and get more. You carry about five of them in the ambulance just for that purpose. Because the diameter is so, the diameter is so small. Why, why can't they make a bigger di uh, diameter? They do. There's some large bore uh, yonker tips. I just don't have any to show you. Okay. The other thing with suctioning is the manual suction. So okay. on the bigger ones though, would you still go for 10 to 15 seconds or would you go less? You would you go maximum of 15 seconds. You could go less all the time. You know, if you suction three seconds and everything is out, then you can stop. Is that what you're talking about? Well, I was saying like on the bigger, on the ones you think. Yeah, it won't take as long. Okay. You pull that. 
This is the manual suctioning. Uh, these work quite well. This is disposable, the handle's not. And you can see the big bore right in there. So you, uh, and you can work on the drip strength while you're suctioning. These work quite well. Uh, there's different varieties, different manufacturers, but this is the one that we have. And so you can, the advantage of this is, uh, one, you don't really need electricity or, or the vacuum. You've got manual power to do it. So that, that is an advantage. You would suction the same way. Head tilt chin lamp. See what you're trying to suction. Back and forth, right? No longer than 15 seconds. Ventilate the patient and it won't come out. I've tried it. I've tried to squirt it in the back out. And it won't, it won't come out. So you can see, look at the, how much vacuum it pulled. Right? So quite a, it, it will, these actually work well. I would almost rather use these than a electric suction. They work that much better, okay? There's the one that you see in the ambulance, see how everything is tucked behind the wall, there's your oxygen, uh, your port for your vent, later today we'll talk about transport vent, and then it'll be hooked into this with the special uh, hose. But this is the type of uh, setup that you would have. The suction is always set up uh, during your time when you're, you're checking out your ambulance, you always check the suction to make sure the suction is working properly. Um, what if they continuously vomit as you suction? Do you just keep sucking yeah. it? You just keep going. You have to clear the airway. So as long as you Yeah. So if it's continuous, you just... Yeah, I mean, you, you really need to clear the airway. I've had a patient vomit for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And uh, they pronounce the patient dead and they were still vomiting. So uh, sometimes you just have to, have to keep suctioning. But remember, you have to also ventilate the patient. So there's a balance there. So you have to clear the airway. You don't want to, you don't want to use your bag valve mask with a bunch of vomit back in there. You're forcing it back down the trachea. Here's the electronic one. They're, they do make these portable battery powered ones. Uh, however, the battery doesn't last very long. And uh, most, most agencies have the, uh, these for, for, uh, man for suctioning, like if you're in the house. This would go in your airway bag. And you take this in with you. The problem with this is that you're in the middle of suctioning and your battery dies, right? So you really need a, a manual uh, suction device. Oh, there we go. And you have the different tips as well. There's a smaller tip. I don't have it available. Talked about the technique already. Five, 15 seconds, five seconds, infants and children. And then again, you may have to rinse the catheter out. You do measure it, so you don't suck out the epiglottis, okay? So the, uh, you measure it from the tip of the, the nose, or the tip of the mouth to the tip of the ear. And then that way you don't go too deep with the catheter. And you just sort of put your finger there. Most of the time, most average people, it's right there at the bend anyway, okay? And plus you're looking, uh, at what you're suctioning. So just like we were talking about, you want to alternate uh, 15 seconds with, with some ventilations, okay? And so you can uh, breathe for the patient. If, if they're using the bag valve mask and you're, you're breathing for them, you want to alternate that. You, you really need to uh, ventilate them, but you need to clear that airway as well. And of course, we use them with airway adjuncts for, with, with suction as well. Uh, some of them have holes in them. You can suction down through a nasal trumpet, an uh, NPA, I'll show you that in a second. 
Or an OPA, some of them have holes in it, so you can put the tonsil tip down through through there. All right. Questions on suctioning? Mm -hmm. Let's look at the OPAs. Have we looked at these yet? A, a little bit, not mm -hmm. not now. Okay. They're all different sizes, as you can tell. Okay, because we all have different size airways. What these do is when you place an OPA, oral pharyngeal airway, oral airway, or OPA, right? Uh, this, me this mechanically pulls the tongue off the epiglottis so you don't have to sit there with that head tilt chin length all the time. So you get the proper size and this is what it does here. It just it sort of sits in the back of the once it's properly inserted, you insert it by putting it on top of the tongue after you measure it, okay? Put it on top of the tongue and then rotate it 180 degrees as you push, rotate it 180 degrees, and if it's the right size, then it pulls that tongue off the epiglottis. This, this part right here, this flange, sits on the teeth, okay? It keeps the tongue off the epiglottis. It keeps the... It just stays there? Yeah. yeah, it keeps the airway open, all right? This is an adjunct. Adjunct is a helper. So this is helping you keep the airway open. That way you don't have to sit there and manually hold the air, airway open. Okay. Uh, there's some indications that you want to write down. The indication for an oral airway is an unconscious person without a gag reflex in need of an airway, okay? So the patient has to be unconscious. Uh, they will vomit to put this in a conscious person's mouth, okay? So an unconscious person without a gag reflex in need of an airway. That's the indication. So what would be a con contraindication? Contra against. They, 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 have, they have a gag reflex. They have a gag reflex and they're conscious, right? So that would be a contraindication. A conscious person or an unconscious person with a gag reflex. You wouldn't use one of these. These would be contraindicated. Okay, so the indications, unconscious person without a gag reflex in need of an airway. Contraindications, uh, a conscious person or an unconscious person with a gag reflex. Our gag reflex is what is prote helps us protect our airway. Like when, when you throw up, has everybody thrown up? Yeah. Can't take that for granted, right? So when you throw up, you sort of gag on it. You, you know, you're sitting there and you're sort of gagging, you're sort of spitting, right? And that's just the, the body's ability to push things off and out of the airway. Right? So it's a protective measure that we have. So you have the OPA to sort of as a helper, as an adjunct, and then as well, like I was telling you, you can put this down through the, see the way that goes down through the oral airway? And you can suction through the oral airway with, um, with the tonsil tip or the soft tip suction. How would you know uh, if they have a gag reflex? When you put this in their mouth and they go, oh. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, they're gagging. They're, they're, all right. There's another way that uh, that I know. Just I don't know where I picked it up from, but you have that unconscious person, and then you hit on the back of their eyelid. So you you tap the back of their eyelids, and their eyelids flutter. And they probably have a gag reflex. You tap the back of their eyelids, and they don't flutter. Then they probably don't have a gag reflex. I have no idea why. I'm just saying it works. I've, I've done that before to see if it actually works and it does. So, uh, the, 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 what? What from the suction? This? No. You don't have a gag reflex then? No. Yeah. Uh, you'd know it if they don't have a gag reflex, for sure. Okay? Or if they do have a gag reflex, you'll know it because of the fact that they're going to vomit on you. And then you'll use this suctioning skill we just talked about. Right. So the way that you measure the OPA 
You take the OPA from the tip of the mouth to the tip of the ear. All right. So this one actually fits. It, it's the right size for Fred. So from the tip of the uh, ear to the tip of the mouth. I think there's pictures. You have to insert it. There's the different sizes. Okay. Measurement: tip of the mouth, tip of the ear. Open it. They use that cross finger uh, thing. I just pull down on the patient's jaw. Okay. Just open the airway. You put it on the the round part on top of their tongue. Rotate it 180 degrees and push, and then it sits, rest up against their uh, their teeth. And then you can bag over this, and this will keep the airway, keep the tongue off the epiglottis. And then there's sort of a, a picture on how it sits in the back. I've only placed these a few times because, again, as a paramedic, I'm going to intubate the patient. If I can put one of these in, I'm putting an endotracheal tube in. Okay. To do, if you guys, on your clinical time, if you do a CPR or have an unconscious person, hey, you know, they're getting ready to intubate the patient. Uh, you know, say, hey, can I put an OPA in right quick? You know, you know, yeah, go, you know, go ahead. Sure. There we go. That's what was missing. That's my favorite part. But uh, so, <laughs> go ahead. Use that. You have to remind them that they're getting ready to intubate. So you have to say, hey, can I do my skills or OPA? You you have to sort of keep reminding them that you need to do that, all right? And then with the child, because of the big tongue, right? You may need to uh, use a tongue depressor to uh, to place the OPA, but you would measure it the, the same way. The other airway device. Any any questions of the OPA? Everybody good there? The other airway device is the NPA or the nasal pharyngeal airway. It's also called the nasal trumpet, okay, because it's a trumpet, looks like a little trumpet, okay. Uh, this is a, I, I put a few of these in, uh, mainly in elderly people who can't keep their head up, and every time they drop their head down, their airway sort of closes off, so I put an NPA in to keep their airway open. Huh? The indication for this would be a conscious patient in need of an airway or an unconscious patient with the gag reflex in need of an airway. Okay. So a conscious patient or an unconscious patient with the gag reflex, you could use an NPA in. You would measure it from the tip of the nose to the uh, Tip, the tip of the ear to the tip of the nose, okay? I mean, the, yeah, the tip of the ear to the tip of the nose, the nose to the tip of the ear, I'll get it right. Okay? Like the very top of the... Yeah, from the nose to the ear. Okay. And, but really, you want to look at the diameter. Everybody has a bigger nair. One nair is bigger than the other. So you find the bigger nair, and then you would place this in the bigger nair. Uh, it's measured in French. It's just the measurement of it. But you would want to use the biggest possible one to put in there so the patient can get the maximum amount of air. Uh, try this next time you go out to the to Whataburger. Okay? Grab that little straw. Pinch your nose and breathe through the straw. Okay? The white one. Okay? And then grab the bigger one pinch your nose and breathe through the straw, and you, you'll be able to see the difference then. You'll want the bigger airway in there, if possible. Uh, contraindications, any sort of facial trauma or head trauma. You can't use these. Uh, they have a possibility of going up into the brain cavity, so you wouldn't want to use a nasal airway on facial trauma or uh, head trauma. They do work well. You can suction with them the same way. If I can find that top tip suction. 
Uh, so you want to go down through the nose. Here. Oh. It's just not moved up. So until I can get those um, screwballs at that place to call me back with an actual answer. Okay, that'll work. We don't move them around. Right. So you could just hang it off and just. I don't know. That'll work for me as long as we have them up. He can scream now. So. Do it on both places. Now it does take about a minute or two for it to actually connect. Okay. But seriously. As soon as I start the manual, I start the manual mode hooked up. It works with no problem. So APS start it. Start the sim. Still talking. Good. Can we stream? I don't know if you can change it. I did it. Okay, so if it doesn't work, put it up for Okay, I'm tired of messing with this. This thing drives me nuts. <laughs> Only yours is giving me so much problems. You know why? Because you moved it. No. That's where it was. It was over there and it was happy over there. Because I used it. <laughs> Ouch. Okay, I'm going to tell the other one. I'm not. You said that. I'm not kidding. No, I'm probably, you're probably absolutely <laughs> right. All right. Anyhow, everybody good with the MPA? Thanks for fixing that. Everybody good with the MPA? So, indication, conscious person with the airway, uh, in need of an airway, or uh, unconscious person with a gag reflex, contraindication, uh, head affects trauma. One thing that you will have to do with the uh, NPA is lube it up. If you stick this in someone's nose without lubing it up, uh, you will create a massive nosebleed. Uh, so the way that it goes in is that Towards the plans, everybody see the plans? Okay, so you will when we practice. You have a flange here, okay? You lube it up and you place the flange towards the midline and then you insert it, okay? In a human, you go here and you actually hit the back of the skull and so you have to lift it up and then push. So once you meet some resistance pushing it in, okay? Uh, lift this, see how when I lifted this in, this end dropped? So you lift this in, and then you then you push it on in, okay? So it needs it needs to be lubed up. It would create a, a pretty massive nosebleed. The flange always goes towards the midline. So let's have a volunteer. 
Lean back for a second. <laughs> here, here. I think you should volunteer, here, Randy. Let me, let me hang on. Oh. <laughs> oh. Come on. It, no. it, it'll only be a little uncomfortable. Yeah. All right. Good. Everybody good with this? NPA? <laughs> All right. Catch up where we are here. There's the different sizes, 30 French, 32 French. Uh, it's just the different diameters of it. Tip of the nose to the tip of the uh, ear. I could talk about measuring it. Lube it up with some uh, non-petroleum-based lubricant. Uh, lidocaine jelly works really good because it numbs it as it goes in, so it makes it a little bit more comfortable for the patient. Uh, and you can breathe through it, suction through it. Uh, it's not a the best airway, but it's uh, it's not too bad. All right, everybody good? Questions? Concerns? Nope. Let's take a break.